human have been coming billions of years in his evolution. It is a revolutionary journey. He has been passing different levels, different stages, adding different features in physically and psychologically. He has been converting from horizontal to vertical. His brain is developing. His brain capacity is upgrading. He is achieving incredible things, developing massive creations. He is exploring the universe. What will be the next? Is he moving forward or he is he arriving to his peak and moving backward? Anyway, he is not tired and he is not done yet. No! The next phase of human evolution. Most of people know about the evolution process of human being. But very few actually knows where it leads in the future. So, the Sparrow, Art of Learning, thought to put an investigation on that and presents you a valuable piece of information. This will really help you to see where humans are driving in the future. If you didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel The Sparrow and hit the bell icon. We humans are Homo sapiens sapiens, a culture, bearing upright walking species, that is lives on the ground and very likely first evolved in Africa. The fossil record tells us, that the oldest member of our own species lived 195,000 years ago in what is now called Ethiopia. From the Homo sapiens, spread across the globe by 10,000 years ago. Modern humans had successful colonized each of the continent, save Antarctica and adaptations to these many outbound forces. Among other evolutionary forces led to what we loosely call races. Groups living in different places evidently retained just enough connection with one another to avoid evolving into separate species. Researches with regards to the human evolution reveal some evidence of the evolution of the existing Homo sapiens. During the entire human evolution with related to Darwin's theory and to the book on the origin of species, 1859, some claim that man was descended from the apes, but some modern scientists not completely agree with that statement. Anyhow, human evolution passes few iconic stages including Australopithecus afarensis stage, the genus Australopithecus evolved in eastern Africa around million years ago, before spreading throughout the continent and eventually becoming extinct million years ago. They were predators of the region, they probably like gorillas and chimpanzees, built a nesting platform at night, in the trees. And they were good climbers, Homo habilis stage, Homo habilis had smaller molars and larger brains than the Australopithecines, and made tools from stone and perhaps animal bones. They had an association with stone tools, and he was nicknamed as Handyman. Homo erectus stage, some populations of Homo habilis are thought to have evolved larger brains, and to have made more elaborate stone tools. This species also may have used fire to cook meat. Homo nandurthalensis stage, Neanderthal brains show a smaller area was available for social functioning. They are the immediate relations to the modern human. These two have more similarities when it comes to gene pool. And the current stage, Homo sapiens stage, emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. The name was given because of the wise or intelligence. Homo sapiens, representative of the earliest modern humans, and suggested that modern humans arose between 260,000 and 350,000 years ago. But have you ever thought about the next phase of human evolution? What about the next phase? Is the human evolution already being ceased, or do we have another phase? If it is yes, what are the features the new phase comes with, and when it is going to happen? These are the few questions scientists are always looking for. Let's move into the theories associated with the next stage of human. To protect apes. During the past century, our species' circumstances have again changed. The geographical isolation of different groups has been broached by the ease of transportation and the dismantling of social barriers that once kept racial groups apart. 
Never before has the human gene pool had such widespread mixing of what were here. Therefore, entirely separated local populations of our species could be seen at that time. In fact, the mobility of humanity might be bringing about the homogenization of our species. At the same time, natural selection in our species is being thwarted by our technology and our medicines. In most parts of the globe, babies no longer die in large numbers. People with genetic damage that was once fatal now live and have children. Natural predators no longer affect the rules of survival. One could argue that everything we do is to secure our future as a species. We travel the stars, probe the earth, explore the ocean's depths, and travel every inch of land, all in order to find the best options for the human species. But where are we on that really? What does the future hold in terms of how humans will evolve? First theory, we are done. One of the theories is we are done the evolution. That means we are no longer evolving. Throughout the history, the evolution works better in a controlled population living in a single habitat. Naturally selected species makes evolution with cross-breeding with time. Some researchers argued that there is no more potentially significant mutation of gene pool to become exist because we are at the peak now. They are further emphasizing their argue saying that with the current medical technology, it gives the chance to pass the weak traits to the offspring. With that situation of the fittest can't operate and the evolve halts. There are positives and negatives of this theory. But anyhow some scientists are thoroughly believe in that. Second theory, a changing painting another possibility is the exact opposite. We are still changing. According to this theory, environmental factors are no longer the driving force for evolutionary change. Sexual selection has become what will define future evolutionary paths. Since people are now choosing to mate based on wealth and intelligence, traits that facilitate those goals will be maximized. This can be exemplified. Looking at the children of athletes, sports players tend to be more attractive and therefore attract similarly attractive mates, making it more likely for those traits to be passed down to offspring. And the genetic cloning of human beings will be taken place and parents can, can have their offsprings with expected skin color, expected height and hairstyle. Mating of that offspring might transmit that genome to the gene pool and spread all around the world exposing mutations to create human beings with different qualities. Some researchers found that that females are currently evolving, becoming shorter and plumper with every generation. Third theory, AI is the next phase. It's no surprise that much technological advancement is currently aimed at the human body. Through gene enhancement, or even tech implants, the body is getting its upgrades not from Darwin, but from robotics or genetic engineering. Technophobia is not a new phenomenon. It was a distinctive feature of about every technological shift that we went through in the modern era. People have always feared to be replaced by machines. Yet, the dystopias born out of this overblown collective fear have never turned out to be true. Technology drives everything. Economics, politics, demographics. It shapes was culture, jobs, history and is an integral part of our society and who we are as a species. However, one part of humankind that technology hasn't yet significantly affected is our cognition. Until now, our evolution was biological. We've developed additional layers of the brain, upright posture, and other physical attributes to adapt to our ever-changing lifestyle. However, we've reached a point in time where our biological evolution can't keep up with the pace of change. The upcoming paradigm shift is not just a technological revolution. It's an evolutional revolution. It's the biggest shift in human evolution since the dawn of time that will change who we are as a species for good. AI will not replace humans, nor will it compete with us. Instead, we will utilize and integrate it into our cognition. Our evolution will shift from biological to technological if you will. It's not the computer that becomes super intelligent. It's the human who becomes super intelligent. We are entering the era that will be reigned by a humankind 2.0.
a more intelligent, more self-aware, more connected, and integrated version of our species. As we are these constant explorer going places we've not yet seen, we may eventually end up becoming a species that's creating whole new branches on our very own evolutionary tree. It's far more likely we will create evolution by mimicking and adapting to the environment we find ourselves in in the near future. There will be controlled populations and there will be distinct habitats as soon as we travel between the stars. In the future the minute we are sending independent space colonies we are creating the perfect conditions for Darwinian evolution to continue. Perhaps Arthur C. Clarke and Stanley Kubrick had the full history and future of human evolution all figured out. More realistically, we may eventually see future generations of humans taking on a variety of shapes and sizes, dependent on their host planet and the conditions that best support the survival of our species. Conditions of modern life could be driving changes in the makeup of our genes. Our bodies and our brains may not be the same as those of our descendants. So these are some theories associated with next phase of human. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel The Sparrow and hit the bell icon. We will meet soon again.